Romney, and, and I got to ask you the question because it is a question whether it should be or not in this campaign is a Mormon a true Christian? Well, in my mind, they are. When people start talking about Joseph Smith, the founder of the church, and the golden tablets in upstate New York, and, uh, and God uh, assumes the shape of a man, do you not get hung up in, in those theological issues? I probably don't get hung up in them because I haven't really studied them or thought about them. And, um, you know, I just try to let God be the judge of that. I, I mean, um, I don't know. I, I certainly can't say that I agree with everything that I've heard about it, but from what I've heard from Mitt, when he says that Christ is his Savior, to me, that's a, that's a common bond. Well, I believe that they are Christians. I don't know if it's the purest form of Christianity like I grew up, grew up with, but you know what, I know Mormons. I hear Mitt Romney, and I've never met him, but I hear him say, I believe Jesus is the Son of God. He believe He's my Savior. You know, that's, the, that's one of the core issues. I'm sure there are other issues that we don't agree on, but you know, I, you know, I can say the Baptists and the Methodists and the Catholics don't all agree on everything. So. That's, that would be my take on it. Let's get to Joe Lowstein, shall we? Speaking at the Washington Times, he's out on the stump promoting his ill-labeled book every day off Friday. Oh, he built the fish. Out hawking it, he got asked some, some questions by reporters, not the least of which was, okay, are Mormons Christians? Yeah, if you were umpiring this little interview, uh, this would be three big strikes. I believe that they are Christians. Stop right there. Sorry. Nothing has changed. Mormons are not Christians. Christians are not Mormons. I can't go into a Mormon temple. They do, not, they do not have the same theology as biblical Christians. Come on, let's all be big boys and girls. Come on, unless there's some sort of weird conspiracy going on here, which I suspect, we're different, okay? I don't know if it's the purest form of Christianity like I grew up, grew up with, but... <laughs> the purest form. Look, there's a difference between a Methodist and a Lutheran. Okay, not a huge difference, but the point is there's a difference, but... Hey, by the way, yeah, your, Luth your Lutheran pastor friend in Cedar Rapids, he, he's, he's, he got sprung out of jail after offering money to the undercover police officer for services. He's... And guess what? Mm -hmm. The church wants him back. Okay. The church would like to have him. Let's talk about this. They don't need an E or an L or a C in their name. <laughs> well, I'm assuming, I don't know, they say that he was one of nine people offered money to the woman, and members of the church want him back. He's well-liked, and he belongs at the church. Well, actually, he does belong at the church, but not as pastor, because now he's disqualified. I saw the most fascinating video this morning, and I'll simply share it with you, because I, I don't want to play it. Maybe I shouldn't even talk about it. I think it's okay to talk about it. A fellow who committed a sin two decades ago, it was discovered that he did some bad sinning two decades ago. And he's been faithfully serving in his church now for two decades. And he confessed it before the congregation. And then the elders came up and gave a statement stating, we've been investigating it. We're all over it. Don't worry. Everybody's safe. We're making sure that everything is handled right. We're dealing with the family. We are de we're, we're doing everything possible to get to the bottom of this and see what's going on. It was a wonderful, it was a wonderful demonstration of how a true church handles this type of issue. And I, and I think one of the things that it didn't show in the video, and I have no reason to doubt that they're, that they're, they're doing it, but I'm, it just wasn't shown in this particular video. Look, I understand somebody perhaps being disqualified for service. Now, maybe for something they did 20 years ago, it starts to get a little bit tricky. But isn't that really when the gospel shines? Hmm? Isn't that when it shines? When, when, a, when an egregious sin shows up from the past, isn't that when Jesus gets a ton of credit? 
or saving a wretch like that? I got to tell you, what I saw in that video was exceedingly encouraging. Handled so maturely, handled so rightly. The guy wasn't ridden out of town on a rail. Why? Because he was willing to say, yes, it is indeed true. And I've repented I've, to my family, to my Savior, to my everybody. And I am sorry. And if it hurts you, I am sorry. And he was contrite. And the elders were behaving maturely. It was a, well, it was a pretty picture to see a mature church. And that actually brings us right back to Joel Osteen. He was speaking at the Washington Times answering questions about Mormonism, whiffing and biffing all over the place. Not a, the purest form of Christianity? Uh, hey, at what point is it just a different stream altogether? Well, I think that point is Mormonism. You know what, I know Mormons. I hear Mitt Romney, and I've never met him, but I hear him say, I believe Jesus is the Son of God. He believe he's my Savior. That's not enough these days. He's the Savior after you do your best. He believes that he's the Son of God who is a created being. See, it's not enough to just hear these words these days. You have to know the meaning behind them. And the meaning behind them, and I know right now there's Mormons listening to me. I know. You're listening on KUTR. I, hello. We don't hate you. This is the last thing this is about. This isn't about hating you. I love you and I want you to go to heaven. But you you got to have the right Jesus. You don't have the right Jesus right now. And you're working and you know it. Maybe you're tired. I know. I know there's a cost. But Jesus asked, what does it profit a man if he keeps his family, his business, his relationships? Doesn't get labeled a Jack Mormon but loses his very soul. You know, that's, the, that's one of the core issues. I'm sure there are other issues that we don't agree on. But... You know, I can say the Baptists and the Methodists and the Catholics don't all agree on everything. Well, <laughs> well, and Catholics got lumped in there too. Perhaps he forgot about the Protestant Reformation. Methodists and Lutherans and, and Baptists, yes, secondary issues. We're talking essentials here. And the good news in all of this, if there is any, because what he just said is exceedingly harmful will give Mormons who are working their way to heaven a little authorization from the most famous pastor in the country. It'll confuse Christians. It, it blurs the gospel. It changes Jesus. But the good news is, evangelicals, I think, have pretty much had it up to here with Joel Osteen. Case in point number one, Albert Moeller. Does Joel Osteen not know or does he not care? It's clear. Joel Osteen's carelessness is deliberate and calculated. Joel reminded the paper staff that he has never attended seminary. Back in 2007, that's a shocker, he told Chris Wallace, In my mind, Mormons are Christians. Mitt Romney says he believes in Christ, and that's what I believe. So you know, I'm not the one to judge the little details of it, so I believe they are. They're not. In the end, said Dr. Moeller, we have to conclude that he does not care enough to know. He doesn't, quote, get hung up on doctrinal issues, nor has he really studied them or thought about them. And his own words indict him. Indeed. Uh, the Irish Calvinist, who is now ordinary pastor, I like Eric's stuff, he does a good job, gave some unsolicited advice to Joel Osteen. Number one, stop it. If you're really as uncomfortable as you seem when you get asked these questions, do yourself, us, and the gospel a favor. Stop taking the interviews. Just decline the interviews or refer them to talk to Al Mohler. He'll keep the southern accent going but won't dribble the theological ball off his leg. Amen. Let a big boy handle it, Joel. You're not equipped. Number two. Knock off this no seminary stuff. You don't need to be a seminarian to know the basics of Christianity. It's different than Roman Catholicism. It's different than Mormonism. Okay? Come on, we're not all postmodern babies. We can handle that, can we? Come on! My self-esteem isn't hurt when a Mormon says I'm not a Mormon. It's okay. I'm not a Roman Catholic. And a Roman Catholic isn't an evangelical Christian. It's okay. We have differences. Let's be big boys and big girls. Number three... From Eric to Joel, 
Come clean. The truth of the matter, Joel, you're a motivational speaker. Let's stop with all this Christianity business. You no longer need Jesus' bandwidth to catapult yourself into national prominence. You're there. Now be yourself. Be a younger, nicer, and far less follically challenged version of Dr. Phil. Just do it. You can launch. Uh, somebody somebody can take over the church. Yeah, but there's a preacher who can... Well, your shoes... Actually, he's barefoot. He's the barefoot preacher. He doesn't even have shoes to fill. Number four. Think. Why did you name your new book Every Day a Friday? Has it ever occurred to you that the leader of the Christian movement was crucified on a Friday? And what made it good was not that it was Yippee Skippy Day. It was... Beyond our imagination for all eternity, we will not be able to grasp the height, the width, the length, the depth of his suffering. And you call every day a good Friday. It's good because he died that day for our sins. Your new book, Highlighting Friday, Living Omits the Truth of Friday Dying. And finally, from Eric, the Irish Calvinist, ordinary pastor, to Joel Osteen, the superstar, repent. Even if you do all of the above, you still need to deal with the fact that you are not faithfully handling God's word. You should read what God says and does to lying prophets who claim to speak in God's name, but actually speak on their own authority. Check out Jeremiah 14 for starters. Joel Osteen needs to repent. Are we concerned about Mormons? You bet. But we should be concerned about Joel Osteen, too. He is as lost as... <laughs> He's as... He is... Tony? He's as lost did. as a... Uh... You tell him how lost. They're... He's so lost. He's... He's as lost. I got it. He's as lost as a typical father on a family vacation going to Mount Rushmore. That's pretty lost. That's pretty lost. And there's only one road basically going to Mount Rushmore. Not Still, that hard, yeah. remember, <laughs> vacation doesn't <laughs> vacation doesn't begin until Dad says, "No, no, no, I got this figured out." That's when the real yucks begin. That's when family bonding starts. I know we where we're going. I know right where we are. Don't you? No, no, no. I don't have to pull over. Not me. Following, of course, in the footsteps of Moses, who refused to pull over forty years, wandering, wouldn't pull over and ask for directions. But you know. And we should be concerned for the followers of Joel Osteen. You know, if he really wants to make people happy with a true joy, instead of the slap happy pablum with a grin that he teaches that, wow, if people can't, they're blind, they can't see through it. He needs to be preaching the amazing, shocking, stunning, staggering gospel of good news that Jesus and Jesus alone saves. No works, my Mormon and Catholic friends. Hour one of Wretched Radio. Checking in from the official side of the Boise State Bronco corn maze, Linder Farms. A new team just headed in, and as far as I can see, they're really on their game.